Hi friends, thank you so much for tuning in. My name's Chess, this is the Scapegoat Club, and this video is all about estrangement and why someone would cut you off without telling you and how to handle that. I hope you'll stay tuned till the end because the last reason I'm gonna give you is the most common one that I see and I think if you are dealing with estrangement, this could be what you're dealing with. So, stay tuned. <music> Hi friends, thank you so much for being here. I'm Chess, I'm a therapist and I talk about estrangement and this video is something that comes up quite a lot with the discussions around estrangement and it seems to be around why did the person cut me off without giving me a reason? I've got no idea why did this happen? So I've got five reasons why I think it could be. They may or may not be the only reasons they may or may not apply to your situation. So I hope you can take care of yourself whilst watching this video, take what works for you and leave what doesn't. So the first reason for not telling someone why you're cutting them out is something that um, a very kind person left in a comment and I really wanted to address this because I hadn't thought about it and I, I really want to acknowledge that this can happen. This person was saying that they were in such a difficult place and they were so ashamed of what they were doing in their lives that they didn't want, in this case, they didn't want their father to know. And I just, I want to just honor the courage that it says to, that it takes to acknowledge that and the courage it also took to acknowledge how much it hurt both the person who'd done the cutting out and the father as well. And so this does happen, obviously, and if it is something you're dealing with, then to me, how to, how to manage this situation is with just a lot of care and a lot of kindness towards whoever it is that feels that they can't tell you. And so if you do think that someone is doing it because they, they don't want to tell you their reasons, then really what we can do is be there and leave the door open to a kind of a supportive and loving relationship as and when they need us. Because if they're ashamed and they're, they're t almost kind of too scared to tell us, then being angry, being judgmental is not going to give them the warm and fuzzies. They're not gonna want to come back for that reason. So we need to leave that door open for them. So the second reason someone might cut us out without giving us a reason is because they want to hurt us. And this to me is the difference between estrangement and alienation and I've talked about that in another video and I'll put the link below. But if someone is cutting you out to hurt you because they want to, they want to inflict some kind of pain, the emotional pain on you, they want to withdraw that contact, then that's again a horrible situation to be in it hurts it hurts deeply and also I think what we need to do in that situation is to think very carefully about our relationship with someone who wants to hurt us that badly and is going to go to those lengths someone who's going to go to that much trouble and to really deeply wound us emotionally do we want to have a very deep relationship with that person? Do we want to have that person in, in the, our inner circle, in an important and influential part of our lives? Do they, how much, how dangerous is it for us to give a lot of ourselves and a lot of our emotional energy to someone who's prepared to do that to us? I'm just going to take a quick pause here and say if this video is helpful or any of my other videos are helpful and you're really struggling and you're not quite sure what to do or you maybe have a limited amount of people that you can chat to. If you ever want to, I do offer one-on-one -on -one peer support coaching around this type of subject. So you can check out my website, give me a shout, 
let me know and we can always have a chat and see if, if we can help work through something together. So the third reason why someone might not tell you why they've cut you out is because they think there's no point. They think that you might not listen or you might tell them that their reasons don't count or that you're wrong or the way you feel is, is not as important as how they feel. If a person thinks that you're not going to listen to what they're going to say or you're not going to listen in a safe way, then it stands to reason that they're not going to tell you. So again, if this is happening to you, we kind of come back to reason number one is, so in this situation, if this is something you're dealing with, then it's important to let that person know that you will take what they have to say seriously, that you are listening. So making sure that they know that space is open for them for when they're ready to come back. I believe that really that's all we can do. And so really that's our biggest step when it comes to reconciling with, with this kind of situation. The fourth reason someone might not tell you that they were cu are cutting you out is because they don't feel safe to. It might tie into the previous comment where they, they don't feel like they're listening, but it might be that when they have aired opinions or, or given their needs before, that they have there hasn't been saved to, they've been punished in some way. It could be verbally, it could be physically. If someone doesn't feel safe to have a difficult conversation with you or with us, when people don't feel safe, they're not going to because it's easier and safer for us to walk away from those kinds of situations. So again, we need to be really honest, brutally honest with ourselves and, and, and have a look back at the history and see is there something that happened that makes this person think that they wouldn't be listened to and they wouldn't be a safe place for them to, to state their concerns. And now, and kind of an example of this is I saw in one of my comments someone talking about they're having problems with their son who didn't want to speak to them and saying, I know I wasn't the perfect parent. I know there were some big problems. I know there was some, some real difficulties in, in the house when this person was growing up, but now I'm fixed. And so it's time for my son to come back. And, and I can see how frustrating that is. And also just because you feel that you're in a safer place doesn't mean that your son feels safe and that it would be safe for them to come back because of all of those memories and all that difficulty. So being very aware that every situation is different and if you're talking parent-child, children's brains are developing obviously during their childhood and so when things happen, when difficulties happen in relationships when they're younger, it really affect, affects their brains and so it's not the same as, well, I was in a bad situation too, but I fixed it if, if you're the parent because you were an adult then. And yeah, it still hurts us, but it doesn't hurt and it doesn't leave the same scars and the same wounds as it does for the kid. So the final reason why someone might cut you out and not tell you, and I think this is by far the most common one that I've seen. And this reason is that they have told us, they have told us the reason why they're cutting us out and we didn't want to listen. We did not want to hear it. And it happens, I think, so regularly. And so this, again, is where we have to be brutally honest with ourselves and really be curious and very open when we think about the relationship and what led up to the, the cutoff. What happened? And often I think people say, well, the, the person who cut me off met another partner and then they left. And so it's the other partner's fault. Could be, could be. Also what happens is that the person finds stability and support and genuine connection with their new partner and they get the strength to see and to be able to put in boundaries, to put in really strong rules around how they interact with difficult people in their lives. And this is hard truth. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear it or can't hear it. And I think that that is really what I want to try and speak to if I can, 
is that if we want to reconcile, if we truly, truly want to reconcile with the people who have cut us out of our lives, we have to be brutally honest with ourselves. And we have to be willing to say, okay, there was a problem on my side as well. And I am willing and I want to go into the depths to figure out what that is. And so if someone has told you, or they've given an, given an, an indication, maybe you haven't got everything set out step by step, but you know there have been problems in the relationship and you're aware of those things, then really you don't have to go back and, and, and bow and scrape and eat all the helpings of humble pie. Really, we just need to say, hey, I think I have an idea that I might have it might have been really difficult for you when this happened and I might have really hurt you and I may have contributed to some really tough things in your life and for that I am truly sorry and also I really really want to see if there's something I can do to help us work this out. We don't have to put ourselves up for being blamed, we don't have to set ourselves up for continually having to be desperately sorry for mistakes that we made decades ago, none of that, none of that. We just need to be a little bit humble and a little and genuine in wanting to fix the relationship, in wanting to come on an equal playing field, on a level playing field with someone who's a fellow human being and saying, I want to be in your life and I would really love to, if you could help me to understand what it is that I can do to help ease this back. Friends, if you're still with me, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your bravery. If this is something you're dealing with and you're like, and it, and it hurts, it hurts like hell and it's really difficult and we have to be vulnerable and we have to, we have to do a lot of work. But I do think it's worth it. And I do think that if we can, actually these things can be fixed. So please like, subscribe, donate, give me a shout through the website. You can check out my blog, all of the things, all of the things. And I will see you soon for another Scapegoat Saturday. Please take care. Bye for now.